Hello, and welcome to the Self Project Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Martin, and I am a master transformation guide who is obsessed with showing you the steps to rediscover who you are, how to best work with yourself, and how to create the life you want and deserve. Here is where I will share more about my own journey and all the things I've learned along the way. And I'm going to introduce you to some pretty incredible people who decided to go for it and are now sharing their gifts with the world. We're going to deep dive into all the things and inspire, motivate, and give you the tools to embark on your own healing, transformation, self-project journey, whatever that may be. So settle in, get comfortable, and here we go. All right, everybody, welcome back this week. And I am so excited to have um, my friend Rebecca blessed on with us today. And we actually connected through, um, it was a while ago, a Kathy Mm -hmm. Heller uh, challenge that she had. And we were all in this big group and we form smaller accountability groups to kind of um, help each other stay accountable to our businesses and help each other grow and make connections and figure things out along the way. So when I reached out to see if anybody was interested in coming onto the podcast, Rebecca was so gracious to come on so she could speak to us today. So I do want to tell you a little bit about Rebecca. She is a master educator, speaker, author, and a self-proclaimed positive change agent, which I love because um, that's why we're all here, because we're all mm-hmm. wanting to make positive changes. And mm-hmm. So I know that um, our topic today, we're going to be talking more about overcoming the negativity bias. And I'm really excited because she's got a book releasing and um, you guys are going to be able to download that. So I can't wait to hear more about it. So do you want to go ahead, Rebecca, and take it away and just tell us a little bit more about who you are, what do you do, and why were you inspired to help others in the way that you do? Yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much for um, having me on here. And I also want to say this is like you alluded, you didn't allude to it, you, fat, you said it, like we, we are in this group where we're connecting with like-minded people for accountability, right? And that is so important as a human being. Like we all need to be connecting, especially with where you want to go, right? <laughs> so if you want this, then that's who you seek out. And with social media, it's so easy to find those groups and connect or get that mentor or have that coach or whatever so that you can get where you want to get. So I just want to like, when you were saying that, I was like, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. yes. So yeah, so I, um, I was an educator for 21 years. And when I was educating, positive psychology wasn't that big of a deal. It's actually quite a new psychology, 20 years old. And um, what they had was called the expectation advantage. And I have a lot of schooling in psychology in that as a teacher. And what I used to do is take um, troubled children, specifically, um, really, I was gifted with troubled boys. And when I mean troubled, I mean violent, throwing chairs, stabbing, like violent, right? And I would take positive psychology and the science behind it. And I would be able in nine months to turn them around. So they had a different belief about themselves. And so they acted differently and they had friends and they were academically doing well and they were happy. Right. And then I left teaching and I got into kind of the whole online world and I started helping adults do the same thing. Right. And then in between teaching and going to the online world, I had my own experience of not being happy. And I was a happy person. I had a lot of skill sets. Right. I went through a divorce. Uh, my school went through a strike and I was really in not a good place. Like, um, you know, really wanting kind of a get out of your life card. Like I was like in such a painful place. And I remember thinking to myself one day, I'm like crying in the shower. Right. So my girls don't hear me. And I'm like, you know, Rebecca, no one's coming to save you. No one is coming to save you. And so, and you know what you need to do, right? You know, you helped other people do it. And that's when I really started being very conscientious about what I was doing and um, the st- strategies I was using both mentally and physically. And, um, and then totally like switched my life. And then I jumped into the online world. And I have to say, like, I 
it's all in your head, right? <laughs> so once you switch your head, your life changes. And now like I travel the world and I help people and I meet amazing people and I connect with amazing people. And, you know, and I am creating my own happiness. And in fact, I'm responsible for it, right? Yeah. That's my belief. And one of the things like today that I wanted to talk about is the negativity bias. So, and I know some of you might be going, yeah, you're happy, but you don't get like my life. You have no idea, Rebecca. Right. And I want to say, yeah. And guess what? You also have to deal with the negativity bias. So what that is, is um, back in the day that we lived on the plains, we had to see danger in our environment quickly or you died. Right. So if you're here, that means your DNA, your gene pool was really good at spotting negativity. And everyone else is gone. They're not in the gene pool anymore. And we have not evolved out of that. And so your brain is literally wired to notice negativity. And it actually gives you a little dopamine reward when you notice negativity, or even if you're thinking about negativity in the future, because it wants to keep you safe and alive. That's its job, right? So yeah, it's like, if you know about that, yeah, I get it. If you're like struggling with happiness, right? And I want to say that there are lots of practices that you can use to circumvent how you are physiologically, right? And one of them that I want to talk about is savoring. Right. Savoring, right? Have you heard of savoring? I have, you know, I think of savory and I think of like food, something mm. like maybe really being present and like enjoying your experience or your food or whatever it is that you're in. That's yeah. what comes to mind for me, but. That's exactly what it is. And savoring is like micro gratitude. And you do it, you actually, in the beginning, you'll have to schedule it because you're not naturally inclined to it. But what it is, is your brain will gloss over a positive moment. I'm not saying that you don't acknowledge it and go, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. But you soon you're on to the next thing and you don't ever rehash it. I'm going to use the word rehash because I know if you're like me, something negative happened and you think about it for days, yeah. weeks, sometimes years. Like, oh God, you yeah. know, and you're like, oh my gosh, they said this and they did this and that happened and then they're going to do this, right? Okay, that's your negativity bias. But you don't often do that with a positive event. Like relive it over and over again and enjoy it, right? So saving is this. In the moment, you're very present with how your body feels, what your thoughts are, the people that you're with, and the, you know, even the smells around you, the texture, um, what you're hearing. It's really sitting in that moment and then choosing to relive it, the fun parts, even maybe by retelling it. And it's really a practice. Like you, It's almost like exercising, right? You have to practice it so it becomes automated because we're not wired that way. And so... What, when, I, when I work with people, I teach them choose like, um, like four times during the day, like in the shower is a good one, right? So savor the warmth, how relaxed you feel, how comfortable you are instead of, oh my gosh, uh, I got to do this and then I got to do that. And I got to do that. And then after I do that, I have to do this, right? Right. Yeah, going yeah, hard oh to gosh, do this. Yeah. No, savor it. You know, the soap is silky, right? Like whatever it is, savor it. And then other places that you can savor are meals, right? Because we all eat. So really savor that meal, like not just like eat it as fast as you can or like I'm not being conscious of the meal, but you're thinking of other things like sit with it. How does it feel in your mouth? How does it taste? What does it feel like going down? How are you feeling right now? You know, are you feeling satisfied? Are you sitting in a comfortable chair? Like really saving it, right? And those would be like four areas that you could um, start a savoring practice um, and schedule it in until you start, um, it starts becoming more automated. And you're like, oh, here's a moment I can savor. Um, for example, my daughter just got a job, right? At in and out And she's so excited. Her first job, she's, you know, 16. And she was telling me that how excited they are to have someone with her work ethic who shows up early, who works really hard. And I was feeling like a proud mama, like, oh, you know, my parenting, like, woohoo. Yeah, yeah. And I was, <laughs> right? But I wasn't savoring it. Not that I didn't feel proud. Not that I didn't like tell her how proud I was. But I'm, I was like moving on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wait a minute, Rebecca, like savor this. Cause you often tell yourself, wow, I should have done this as a parent. I should have said that as a parent. I, you know what I mean? We all do as parents. Like I could have done that better. You know, we, yeah. we beat ourselves up. But when the good moments happen, like we just like, okay, that was great. I'm so proud of you. And what am I doing next? Right. Instead of sitting in it and saying, yeah. 
I feel it's a light, um, a lot like that too, at least for myself with goals. I set a goal for myself and then I hit it and I'm like, oh, okay, cool. That's great. What's the next thing? Instead of sitting and really like, like you said, savoring the experience, the moment and taking a look at like, wow, look what I did. Look at, you know, maybe how long I've been doing this or how much I put into this or how much I gave to this. And I reached my goal. Instead, we're just like, what's next? You know, Mm -hmm. I'm the same way as you. And a good way to savor that if you're a goal setter and then you Mm -hmm. reach it is to, once you've reached that goal and you're sitting in that moment, write down where you were this time last year. (laughs) And you'll be like, whoa, like I came so far. Right. Cause, um, especially driven people, they're always next, 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 reach the goal. And the goal, um, we think it's going to make us happy, but if you've ever done the Yale university class by Dr. <laughs> Santos, no, that's a trick. Your brain doesn't actually get happy when it arrives, but really like, but you can, you can savor and go, wow, look what I accomplished. And then write down, where was I this time last year? And you will be surprised at the amount of growth that you'll see. I really love that. That's a great suggestion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like the same thing. So my book is launching uh, Friday. It is called Ignite Your Happiness. And it's actually a compilation of stories. So I'm not the only author. And it's all about kind of overcoming a place that you weren't happy and how you got to happiness. And I'm really trying to savor this. <laughs> I'm really trying to savor it instead of, okay, Because that also, that was a limiting belief I had. I didn't feel like I could write. I was afraid to write. I had this opportunity. I stepped through the fear. I did it. And I'm really trying to savor this. Like, okay, Rebecca, like you were really afraid and you were like, no way. There's no way I can do this. And you did it. And here you are and you're about to launch and like savor that. You're here. Yeah. (laughs) You did it. Like, that's so exciting. That really resonates with me because it, a huge goal of mine to someday write a book and I'm so stuck in the fear and limiting beliefs over it. Like, mm-hmm. so I, that really resonates. So. Yeah. And my, and I've been told often that I am, I'll use the word concise <laughs> communicator, mm-hmm. but people will be like, you're abrupt, you're too direct. And my email, like I'm, I forget to, to even go, Hey, hi, how are you? I'm just like right to the point. Right. Yeah. And so I have this belief that I'm not a writer because I'm also a voracious reader. So I know what good writing looks like. I'm like, I can't write like that. I can't be descriptive with adjectives and like, you know, that's not me. I can't write. And here I am. And I wrote, I wrote, you know, and so, and it's all just beliefs. We we create these beliefs because someone said something to us, maybe even just once, maybe just once. And it has such an impact. You started acting as if that was true. Like I was acting as if that was true. And I'm like, but I knew enough because I coach it. Rebecca, fear, fear means that you actually are supposed to do it because fear means you have a limiting belief, right? Mm -hmm. And you just need to do it no matter how afraid you are because on the other side will be something amazing. And, And there is, and now I get to savor it. Yes. I'm so excited for you. So you're telling us this is um, like compilations of other people's stories too. Mm -hmm. So what is the overarching, um, like, would you say theme of it? Yes. Well, the name encompasses it. It's called ignite your happiness. It's a compilation of stories from people around the world who were I would say in a struggling and some of the stories are very poignant and very raw and very vulnerable and that I'm sure that will resonate. You're going to find a story or two or three or four or five. They're going to resonate with you when you're like, that's me. That's where I'm at. Right. And how they overcame it and went through or got through it to the other side and what they did to get to the other side. And then at the end of every single story, we all put like a step that you can take like an easy step that you could take. So there's like all these steps too. So you can say, so it's not just like, wow, this is a really heartfelt story and it's really heartwarming, Mm -hmm. but here's what actually I can do right now to get to happiness. Um, So it's, it's really, and it's free for three days, (laughs) three days only. So for, it's called, you can go to Amazon, ignite your happiness, the 28th through the 30th, you can download it for free. But then after that, it'll cost you. Yeah. So it's free for three days for everyone. And I highly recommend that you get this, you download it, you read it because not only are like, you're going to be able to relate to probably a lot of the stories you'll be able to like have tools, actual steps that you can take. I love that. Yes. That you include the exercises. So almost like a workbook, not only something to inspire you and, um, you know, give you 
you're literally help. getting steps to mm -hmm. do the work, to mm -hmm. do the work. So I'm going to link that in the show notes to your Amazon so that when Perfect. you leave, everybody go and download that guys, go and get that. And then obviously review it. If you love that book, obviously we her a review on Amazon when you're done. So we can share this. That would be great. <laughs> yes. so you can't get that book if you didn't book. like it, don't leave a review. Yeah, if you don't like it, just <laughs> feel free to give me a feedback. <laughs> <laughs> but not on Amazon. <laughs> I mean, yes. That's so awesome. So that's just so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And so um if I may, there's a couple other things that I use to like circumvent that negativity bias. Yes. And another one is gratitude. And and um and I'm gonna tell you this, and people are gonna be like no way. But there is a, and you can go research him. His name is Robert Emmons. He is a positive psychologist. I think he's a, actually maybe even a cognitive neuroscience. And he is the number one expert in gratitude. And he has done study after study after study that shows that people who practice gratitude, and he's done it with eight-year-olds to 80-year-olds. Oh, if you practice gratitude for three weeks, it is shown to improve your level of positivity by enormous amounts, enormous amounts. And I, and I don't want to say the number because I can't remember. I think it was 40%. But, and it's just literally with a gratitude practice. And here is why. You cannot have two opposing thoughts at the same time. You're either happy or you're sad or you're angry or you're not, right? Or you're frustrated, whatever. And so when you're practicing gratitude, you're circumventing that negativity circuit. You literally can't be negative while you're writing what you're grateful for. And, and um, what happens also, because our brains, um, they like patterns, it looks for patterns. Um, and, and during the day, if you know that you're writing something at night in your gratitude journal, your brain will actually start looking for things it can put in the book. So you start being grateful or your journal during the day because you know that night you're gonna write in your um, gratitude journal. And if, personally, here's what happens. Like I, um, you know, I get to get together with people that I love often and, um, and I didn't used to be grateful for it. But now I'm like, oh, I get to write this in my gratitude journal. I'm so grateful I got to see my adult daughter today. I'm grateful that we're gonna go shopping. Before I would, I mean, I would be happy and definitely so, you know, fulfilled when I'm with her, but I never would have thought about being grateful thinking about it ahead of time because I know I'm going to write it in my journal tonight. And so it really starts reformatting your brain almost. And there's nothing that you even have to try to do. Your brain will do it for you mm -hmm. because it wants to put something in that journal. Yes. It will look for, I mean, it will look for what we give it instructions to look for, whatever you're focused on. That's, it's finding more of that for you. Mm -hmm. So yeah. That's definitely powerful. And I started mm -hmm. my gratitude practice. It was like that. Um, so I do mine in the morning. So it would be looking back at the previous day. Okay. Mm -hmm. What was I thankful for specifically yesterday? And not just like a broad thing, like, Oh, I'm thankful for my husband. I'm thankful for the house. Mm -hmm. and I tried to get really specific about it. Like, Oh, I'm thankful for my husband because, um, you know, maybe he brought me home something or he mm -hmm. came home earlier or whatever, or he took mm -hmm. the kids so I could have a little bit of quiet or, you know, mm -hmm. So I know for me, like getting really specific with it also just helps me. You yeah. Know, be grateful. Mm -hmm. And then there's also like, um, there's different gratitude practices you can do. If you, you do not have to write in a journal, there's so many gratitude practices. Mm -hmm. And the one that I like the best that involves your family is you get a, it could be anything, pieces of paper you staple together, anything to write on. It doesn't have to be extravagant. And you put it with a, some type of writing utensil in a high traffic area in your home. Usually it's the refrigerator. Yeah. But it's somewhere in the kitchen, usually. Somewhere in the kitchen, yes. Yeah. And so, and then what you do is you write things specifically that you're grateful for to everyone in the family and you don't, and it's not required. So you don't have to like every day write something, but you write something to your son or to your daughter or to your spouse. Oh and then they, God. and they get to write it too, to their siblings, to you. And the thing about this is when you start when they're little, it's going to be scribbles. It'll be so cute. And then you get a <laughs> little impression. Right. But they get to see you being loving, specifically saying specific loving things in this journal and to each other and you know and so it's like this family gratitude and then some parents 
have taken the journals or journal at the end of the year and had them bound and had like 2020, like the family love journal. And, okay. and then, yeah. And then every year you get to see the progression, especially the children um, talking to each other and the way their writing changes. And then they now have instilled in their makeup and their beliefs a gratitude practice and all you did it all you did was like put this journal out like we're going to write to each other yeah you know, in the beginning that. you're going to obviously have to do maybe at night you spend some time reading you know what each other wrote when they're little little but yeah. it's a great way to incorporate gratitude into your family i really love that idea so i think that we are going to institute something like that because my boys love that especially when we do um when we were going to school, I was always putting little affirmations in their lunch boxes. So they would open up their lunch and just have a, you know, a short little note. So I feel like it's, that would be something really good for us. Cause now that we've gotten away from that with quarantine, I really love this idea because we're always cruising through the kitchen. Yeah, it is really a neat thing for, for the family to do. And then to grow, especially for the kids to grow up with it is really yes really powerful mm -hmm. oh thank you for sharing that with us mm -hmm. i love it um and then i also saw rebecca was gracious enough to she also has another just like a short i think it's a guide or a book that was um oh, where did I, write it down now? I have a lot <laughs> yes, i know it was the gratitude actually one that gratitude i power. Um, yeah yes there we so, go so yeah what it is so it is a compilation it's an ebook of all different types of ways of practicing gratitude. Mm -hmm. So I don't want you to get stuck up on, I have to get a journal and write in it because writing is not my thing. There are so many ways to practice gratitude. And then this gives you all the ways to do it about how much time it will take, kind of the materials that you need. Yeah. That's awesome. So I was going to say, I was just going through that again this morning and I was looking at, there was just tons of different practices in there, like she said. So then, you know, there was journaling. There was, I love sitting around the table and just like, um, I love that one. Just seeing what you're grateful for. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And then I also want to like caution people who are, if they've not done a gratitude journal, um, and this is for anything in your life. So one of the things that we do is we go gung ho. We're going to go work out five days a week, 30 minutes a day. We're going to write in our gratitude journal, 20 things every night, whatever it is. Right. And you won't stick with it. No. So there's a thing called tiny habits and it's part of atomic habits. And I'll just give you the summary. Start small, start small and, um, and don't, and be okay with it. Let yourself off the hook. So when, um, I first started my gratitude journal, even though this sounds um, obnoxious. I really struggled with what I'm going to write in my gratitude journal. I get it. Now I can write pages, right? And so I would recommend starting tiny. Like tell you, if you're going to do a journal, like it's one thing, one thing that, you know, and then really so that you'll stick with it so that you won't start feeling overwhelmed because when you start a new habit, there's parts of a habit. One of it is like, okay, a cue, something that starts you, but in the end of it is the reward. So when you first start doing something, you don't see the reward. And so you're, you don't usually continue it because it becomes too like overwhelming, right? So start tiny. If you're going to, you know, if you're going to begin, start tiny. Yes, I definitely, yes. Like you say, you start everything so gung-ho. I think about that like with an exercise program and then yeah, a couple of weeks in you're like. I know, I'm not doing this anymore. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I love that. So do you have any more tips for us as far as um, overcoming negativity bias? Yeah, I have a lot. I'll give you one I more. Know, I know. Give no, us I have a lot. That's what I coach. That's what I teach. So here's another one. So um, we have three neural systems. We're usually, I'm only going to talk about two. So usually you're in the, um, there's a sympathetic neural system and that's your fight, flight, or freak. So that's like get up and go, get that done or run from the tiger. And then there's the parasympathetic, which is when you're relaxed and you, um, it decreases your blood pressure, it decreases your heart rate, it slows down aging, your body heals in that. There's a lot of benefits to being in the parasympathetic and you need both, right? But in the Western world, and especially women in the Western world, because we're these nurturers and caretakers and we never left that role, but we added on the role of going out and getting stuff, you know, so now we have two roles um is that we are more often in the sympathetic neural system way more than we should be and especially with what's going on in the world 
right now and we're ingesting these the news. I mean, you just can't help. And there's, um, even though you don't maybe feel like you're stressed, a lot of doctors are seeing a rise in insomnia right now. It has nothing to do with a hormonal imbalance or whatever. It has to do with your stress level. Even though you don't feel that you're stressed, you might be having more headaches now, hives, rashes, you can't sleep. That's stress. And, and you don't know it. You don't know that you're in the sympathetic neural system, which by the way, ages you, causes all kinds of diseases. Like it's not good. And so there are things that you can do to drop into the parasympathetic neural system. You literally trick your body um, into dropping into it. And it has to do with breathing. So when you're in the parasympathetic, your breaths are slow and deep, like when you're asleep, because you're in the parasympathetic when you're asleep, right? And you're taking, your body is taking, slow, deep breaths. And there's ton, a ton of breathing techniques that you can use. But the one that I use, and it's, it's really short, it's less than a minute, is that you take three deep breaths in through your nose and you imagine the oxygen going to your brain and then you let it out as slow as you can through your mouth. So that's three times in through your nose and as much as you can, just keep expanding until you can't get any more in and envisioning that going to your brain and then out through your mouth as slow as you can. Then on the fourth one, you breathe in as much as you can and you imagine it going to the part of your body that is stressed, your neck, your shoulder, wherever you carry your stress, your lower back. And then you hold it for 10 seconds and then you let it out slowly. And you will just even be talking about it because <laughs> my body's just doing that. I'm like, ah. but, yeah, so it'll drop you into the parasympathetic, right? And I would recommend, even though you're like, I'm not stressed, I'm not stressed, you probably are. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you have any of the symptoms that I just talked about, you are. Is um, I would practice that three times a day. It's, it takes you less than a minute to do. It will give your body a break. It'll, it'll drop it into the parasympathetic. And, um, and, and it'll help relieve stress that you don't even know that you have. And, th and that also gets you out of the negativity bias because one, you're not focusing on any negative thoughts. And then, and two, you know, you're, you're dropping your body into a different neural system. Um, so that, that is something that I, I often, I've been using that for years and years and years. And if you don't, like, if you're like, I think, you know, I don't really like that technique, Google it. There's so many breathing yeah. techniques, but it has to do with your breath because um, when you're in the parasympathetic, your breath is slow and deep. No, that is great. I love that because I'm also, I just finished up a breathwork certification. So, so you know about all of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you so much for sharing that last tip with yeah. us. So your new book's coming out like very, very soon. How else uh, do you do one-to-one -one coaching? Do you offer programs if somebody was to want to work with you? Yeah. Thanks for asking. So I have a website. And it matches my uh, positive, yes, positive thinking revolution. And, and it is maybe misleading. You know, just, it's not about positive thinking. It's about mindset, but it is a revolution. And I'm passionate. I'm so passionate about helping people like get out of being, un being stuck, right? You don't have to stay there. And so, yeah, you go to my site, positive thinking revolution. You can see how to work with me. There's a ton of free stuff on there. So like there this. Yeah. So you can go there, download a bunch of free stuff. And, um, and there's no reason to stay stuck. There is not. And it's all like, you do have the power within you to change it. You really do. And you really can have the life that you want. You really can. You can. Yes. I'm like, yes. <laughs> yes. I know. I'm like, I just want to, to scream and cheer. So thank you so much. So I'm going to link to you're on Instagram. Mm -hmm. You can find her on Instagram, Positive Thinking Revolution. Mm -hmm. Same thing on Facebook and same for her website. So I will mm -hmm. link all of that in show notes. So you can just click the link, go straight to it. We're going to link your new book. Was there anything, anything that I missed that we need to talk about? Oh, I could talk for days, but I think those are good things. I mean, so, you know, savoring, practicing those micro yeah. gratitudes, schedule it in because you'll forget. Really try to get a gratitude practice and then... I really do recommend that everyone does a breathing technique right now. Like I, I do it um, at least three times a day, if not more, um, just because we are, we are in a time that is stressful. Yes. And there's one thing that you also mentioned to just kind of close it up on your website that really stuck out to me too. And speaking of the times, um, you know, we're also feeling the energy. We are all connected. 
And, um, you know, we are also are also are absorbing, you know, that energy from just the collective in general, just humanity in general, you know, you mm-hmm. can pick up on those vibes. Mm-hmm. So that yeah. really stuck out to me too, but you know, we are energetic beings, right? Part yeah. of us is energetic. I mean, there's different parts of us, obviously there's a physical part of us, yeah. but there's an energy part of us as well. And, and you're connecting to the collective. And I do believe every, we're connected. We are all mm-hmm. connected. And I also believe that it's our responsibility individually to empower ourselves, to put as much love and light into the world as we can. Mm -hmm. Right. And you can't do that if you're stuck in negativity. So like, yeah. So that, that is my, that is what I'm really passionate about. Yeah. And we're all connected. Mm -hmm. I love that because, um, I feel the same way as you do. So I just want to thank you so, so much for being here today, for giving up some of your time. I know you're super busy, especially you have got a book. You've got a book releasing in a couple of days. I'm so excited for you. Thank you. Again, Rebecca, thank you for being here. Um, Everybody go check out the book. Make sure that you go visit her website, go follow her on social media. And I will see everybody next week. I really, really hope that you enjoyed that interview with Rebecca. So I just wanted to share a few takeaways from our conversation with you. Number one, you have the power to create your own happiness. Number two, savor your experiences, praises, meals, goals, all of it, three to four times a day. Build it into your day and make it a part of your daily practices. Number three, write down where you were last year. Give yourself that credit for achieving your goals and allowing yourself to see just how far you really have come. Number four, step through the fear and just do it anyways, whatever it is that you're wanting to do. Number five, start a gratitude practice, but start small. And number six, Start a breathing practice three times a day. Start by taking three deep breaths, one at a time, and deeply through your nose like you're inhaling all the way up into the brain, giving oxygen to the brain, and then let it out. And you're going to do that three times. And then on the fourth one, you're going to hold for the fourth, yeah, you're going to hold for 10 on the fourth breath, and then exhale. See how you're feeling after that. Number seven, you have the power to create the change and the life that you want. So I hope that this inspired you today and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for joining me today for the Self Project Podcast. I hope that you were able to find something useful or inspirational to take away with you today. So come and connect with me over on Instagram. It's at underscore Christy Martin. And let me know what you want to hear more of. Go ahead and subscribe to the podcast and leave a review and I will see you next time.